The following program is a production of Pioneer Public Television. In this episode of Postcards. I think the community likes to kind of think of it as maybe their home or something that they have too here in the town. Mostly steel is what I like to work with. The way it's been used throughout the ages is a big uh, inspiration for me. The music, it's a, a language, you know, and uh, we can, we are connected by that language. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center. Your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota, a relaxing vacation or great location for an event. Explore Alex.com. Easy to get to, hard to leave. John Lund uh, was originally from Canby. He was born here and grew up. He was a real estate dealer, and so I think he saw the opportunity to become a millionaire. I think this was one of his goals, was to become very well-to-do, well-known. And so I, this, I'm sure, is why he came to the Canby area. He could buy this land because it wasn't developed very much and make his millions and do something, build a community. I think this was important. I think he can he like he I think he wanted to be remembered. John Lund designed the house to be palatial. I think he wanted it to be a show place. He put the, after the house was built, they put the stone fence up. Uh, they built, this whole block, half block was John's. The original house was not like it is today, of course. It was quite plain on the outside. I think John Lund pushed, they said they only had Sundays off to rest. Otherwise, they worked six days a week. The original house was built in 49 days, and it, that is kind of one of the phrases that's used is the 49-day house. After John had sold his land, he sold the house to his brother-in-law and his sister, Reverend Hole, and then he and his wife, Flora, moved back to the cities. And that is why we have incorporated the names Lund Hole because we just feel that the whole family did a lot for the community also because Reverend Hole started a lot of churches in the area. After Reverend Hole and his wife had died, Nella acquired the house and this was one his youngest daughter. She lived here for a time and she married a businessman Andrew Berg was his name from the cities and after a time then they decided to move to the cities. When she left she literally cleaned the house out as far as furniture, rugs, anything that was not tied down. <laughs> um, after when Nella died, after many, they bought the house from Minnie Richter, the board went down to Andrew Berg's home 
and acquired many of the things and Andrew gave back a lot of many, many things also uh, that belonged in the house, that had originally been in the house. These items now are in the house. They are marked, anything in the house that has a red ribbon on it is original to the house. Has always was always in the house up to the time that Nella sold it. This piano is original to the house. It belonged to Nella, and she uh, was an accomplished piano player and a teacher, and so she did give lessons on it. We have kept the piano up when we have our ice cream socials. We have uh, someone who comes in and plays piano. People like to hear the music. Karen Olson is one of the uh, people who have come in when we have our ice cream social and played the piano here. She's a local lady and she gives piano lessons besides. She also plays in one of the churches in town, Horton. The Bible that is in the case was Reverend Hole's family Bible. It has all the records, information on the various members of the family. It, the writing, the biblical verses are in Norwegian, though. On the, ta on the desk is a, a cap and a bugle. When John Lund had bought this land from in the Canby area and started soliciting buyers from the cities to come out and buy the land from him, he would uh, get together some of his friends that played musical instruments from Canby and they would meet these prospective buyers at the train and serenade them as they were getting off the train. And this is John Lund's cap and his bugle. He also had a vest, but at one time that was evidently destroyed in a fire, and so we do not have that. This is the family dining room. The dishes on the table, the, some of the plates belonged to Nella, uh, and they were able to acquire them back from uh, her estate. The other pieces are just fill-ins that people had that donated them to the house. The two silver napkin holders are original to Reverend Hole and his wife, and their names are on them. The door up above me is called the mystery door. We have students from the elementary school come in and tour the house. They like to think about things and imagine what is behind the door and if we know what's behind the door and very excited about seeing it. We are in the billiard room. It was John Lund's billiard room when Reverend Hole lived here. He used this as his office. The desk is uh, Reverend Hole's desk. Uh, on the table, on the desktop, is a marriage license and the picture of the two people that were married. We have been told that they might have been the first couple that he married when he came to Canby. I'm sure if you were a couple getting married, you wouldn't want kids running through. Uh, if you were confirmation class, I'm sure he wouldn't want any disturbances if he was trying to teach them something. So it, it just made a nice, quiet place for him to be. I guess I, I like to come here. I like to give tours of the house just to share it with people, share the information I have. Sometimes descendants of Reverend Hole will come and it's gratifying for, to see how they kind of almost feel like, well, there's a little bit of me in this house. I think the community likes to kind of think of it as maybe their home or something that they have too here in the town. When we have our ice cream socials, we just have such a big turnout. People sit in the backyard at picnic tables and sit and visit all afternoon. And many of them, as many times as, they, as, many times as they've gone through the house, they still like to 
just walk through the house one more time. So I, it's, it's a community home. Up here in New York Mills, it's just about 45 acres of trees and gardens and sculptures and a few buildings, and this is where I live. going to um, the College of uh, Visual Arts in St. Paul back in the early 90s and I was there for uh, illustration originally that's what I was uh, majoring in and then I took some sculpture classes and really enjoyed them at first I was intimidated a little bit by sculpture but once I started figuring out how to work with the metals and wood and everything and use the tools I really enjoyed it and especially when I learned how to weld that really kind of ignited the desire to sculpt for me. I've experimented with woods and different types of metals like aluminum and bronze, but I really have kind of gotten into the realm of steel, and I use cast iron once in a while too, but mostly steel is what I like to work with. The way it's been used throughout the ages is a big uh, inspiration for me. The way it's built the industrial world and, you know, been the, the backbone of uh, skyscrapers and bridges and basically all structural things. My process for making sculpture, it, it varies, but I'll kind of do some drawings and loosen up my thoughts and stuff, and from that, if one really strikes me as something that I'd like to make, then I could use the drawing and figure out proportionally, proportionately how to build it or make a cardboard model of the piece and figure out exactly how I want to do it three-dimensionally and then build it, build the piece out of steel and or cast iron from there. Sometimes the material itself inspires me to make something out of it and that can be fun too. In that case, I don't always need a drawing or a model. Sometimes I can just see something in a piece of metal that I want to cut or weld to it to make a sculpture. So those are fun too. In my house I've got a little kind of a smaller piece. It's a cast iron piece that I really like. I call it tooth and it's kind of inspired by maybe Stonehenge type things and, and structure and, and that type of th idea. I'm working on some farm machinery type pieces that I have in the yard here and I like those. The inspiration for these is um, old farm machinery combining with extinct creatures kind of look. So this one's called Stegaplow and uh, this one here I really like. This is called Tusks so it's got the mammoth tusk feel to it with with kind of an old digger implement farm machinery piece that's been modified of course because I like to uh, I like to take things apart and then reassemble them a little differently that's kind of how I come about the um, farm machinery pieces I've been working on And here we are at Fossil. This was a sculpture I made this year, 2014. 
And I just, um, I wanted to galvanize a sculpture. I've been wanting to do that for about 15 years now, and I thought with this piece, it would be a good piece to galvanize, kind of the bone type of a feel to it. And so I, I brought it down to uh, Winstead, Minnesota, and had it hot dip galvanized this summer. It was, I'm very happy with the way it looks. It was really shiny when I first got it back, and it's kind of getting a little dull, which I like too. I, I liked it shiny, but I like how it's changing, kind of like with some of the rusting that some of my other pieces do. It's fun to watch it evolve with, with the weather and the rain, and we'll see what happens after it gets snowed on this winter. And, but I like watching the pieces change their patinas. I built this model and I've got two-thirds of the sculpture completed in actual size and when it is done it'll be right around 16 feet tall which will be the tallest piece to date and um, so I've got two more I call them wing type pieces cut out there, but I need more steel to cut out the other two and then I also need to find um, the steel for the middle tank part and then I can finish this particular sculpture. Being an artist in a small town has a lot of benefits because a lot of people know you and are willing to help out, you know, um, donate materials to you. and like give you a heads up if there's if somebody's looking for some artwork or if there's a gallery that's got a show that they know your work would fit into or something so yeah that's very helpful I kind of look at my pieces as uh, conversation starters so yeah people can be inspired to talk with other people about either it or something related to it I like that and they are abstract pieces, so they don't always give a definite focal point as to what it is. So it, you know, it's interesting to hear uh, everybody's point of view about the different pieces I created. I had learned about Nuno um, through YouTube. Um, we had kept in touch just a little bit. Nuno didn't really like to type English, so I would always say Happy New Year, and he would say Happy New Year. And then a couple months later, Hi, how are you? Fine. And that's good. And so the conversations were probably two to three words for the first six or seven years. So I decided to pursue learning the violin. I'm only 50 years old and I thought well this would be fun and Nuno asked how much it was to take lessons online and I said well it's you know it's about two to three hundred dollars a week but I just wanted a kind of a crash course to get me started and we added it up and it was about the price of a plane ticket and um, Nuno's first response was well that's a plane ticket why don't I just come over and teach you and your family and friends in person Okay, the lesson is... When I picked Uno up at the airport, um, it was just really fun to see him in person. Um, one of my favorite musicians, and um, I had brought along my acoustic violin, an old Suzuki violin, and um, pretty much all the way home to Montevideo, he played the violin. Maybe two months ago, starts uh, an uh, invitation, because in, in this place, people like a lot of culture, you know, it's a culture thing. And I, I put some videos, of, uh, and uh, my manager put some videos too of our concerts in, in uh, all the places. 
and um, the band, our band, the name is The Crow, The Crow Ibiza, because we, we, we make a lot of work in Ibiza in, in the season, by the summer. And uh, I think uh, Sandy uh, was looking for um, a little song for his child, uh, and she liked a song, the name is The Crow, you know? And when she put in the, in the Google uh, or on YouTube the crow, um, I think it's uh, looking about a, a little lullaby song and uh, <laughs> appears my video, I don't know why. Sandy answered and put uh, something, very, uh, li I like this song, uh, uh, I'm gonna make a, a video of your, of your songs, uh, edit some videos and making, making some compilation of your songs. And put we are we become friends, you know, by, by virtual friends. It's a long story, you know. It's a very long story. I I started learning violin at five five years old. I I love the sound of the violin, and and my my grandfather is a musician. My father plays in the orchestra for. 40 years, you know, and uh, I grow up with music in, in, in my home. I consider my violin, it's for me, it's my best friend, you know. I love traveling and um, every, every, every time I, I make a, a travel to India, Sri Lanka, Australia or whenever, I I went with my violin, and and uh, in that places, uh, I know people. Sometimes in the street they are playing. I, I I like that challenge to pick up my violin and start to start to to to, to play with that with the, that guys. In Brazil, uh, it it happens some funny stories. People are playing. In, imagine I'm driving a car and I I, I watch in the in this. In the, in, the, in the middle of nowhere, there are three old guys playing uh, the, like accordion and a little per percussion. And I, I stop the car, I pick up the violin and I say, man, may, may I join with, with you guys? Can I, I play a little bit? And uh, they, in that, that, that experience, it, we never uh, forget, you know, the best memories that it's not in the photographs. Uh, to keep in the photography, uh, the, um, I think when we remember in our brain, it's wonderful, mm, and I, I learn a lot uh, with that uh, experience uh, when you play in the sui generis places, you know. And that that experience, like I, I made here in, in Montevideo. Tonight um, we have Nuno at the Hollywood. He's going to be doing a concert for Caitlin Pauling, and the money raised will be used for Batten's Disease Support and Research Association. When I had asked 
Nuno of some of the things he'd like to do. Um, Nuno's on television a lot, and he said, well, you know, let's do something on TV or radio, and I said, well, how about a concert for something that you really care about? And both of our families have a lot of cancer, and I wanted something that was meaningful to the community, and not about me, not about Nuno, about something in the community, and we chose Caitlin. I asked Nuno, and his first response was, it would be my pleasure to do a concert for Caitlin Pauly. I, I like a lot that that all your theater. It's very, it's it's a, a very good uh, room, you know. It's uh, emblematic and have a, a lot of charisma. The music, it's like a synergy, you know. It's like uh, uh, music is universal in universal language, and uh, uh, sometimes we we express our feelings uh, and. Uh, it's, it's uh, for me. It's very grateful, and I, 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 I thank you a lot. I used to say thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, because uh, um, I enjoy so much the, 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 this place and uh, everybody, you know. But uh, I said that music is a universal language, and I, I think that that universal language become, as you said, um, you can <laughs> help. Yeah, the connected, the connection, the because the the music, it's a, a language, you know, and uh, we can we are connected by that language. It's the the music connects. I I. I I teach you in the violin, I teach you the kids, and uh, I think it's a very good experience to, to me. I, I learn a lot with, with this trip. Do you have an idea for the Postcards team? Email us, postcards at pioneer.org. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yako Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center. Your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota, a relaxing vacation or great location for an event. Explore Alex.com. Easy to get to, hard to leave.